Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us in association with Betfair and Football 365 for our preview of the biggest game in football, the £170 million game. It is Brentford versus Swansea. It is Saturday, 3pm. It is the playoff final. All roads lead to this game. We've had Norwich go up, we've had Watford go up. Who will be joining them in the Premier League next season? Will it be Brentford? Will it be Swansea? It's third against fourth. It is the two highest ranking teams in the playoffs have made the final. Brentford will want to go one step further than last season where they lost in the finals. Swansea have already gone one step further than last season where they lost in the semi-finals to, guess who, Brentford. So a bit of a grudge match in that regard. Let's have a look. We're going to have a look at the likely teams. We're going to have a look at the likely systems and strategies. And we're going to have a look at some of the key battles. When it comes to Swansea, we've got to really look at the first leg team. That being because Wayne Routledge, um, 36, I think, a winger, was brought in to play at number nine in the second leg. Steve Cooper just wanted an experienced pair of hands that would follow out all of those instructions, be in the right place when he's needed. Um, someone he could really, really rely on in that um, second leg. So Wayne Routledge started, and very sadly, um, did his um, ACL. So... Um, Good luck to Wayne Routledge. It could possibly be a career ender uh, given his age and the length of time there. So really dreadful story there. Um, sadly, though, where one door closes, another one opens. And that is the leg one team where Liam Cullen was preferred in that position. Um, I wonder if Steve Cooper just reverts back to that lineup. Woodman in goal, Norton, Cabango, Gray, Bidwell, Grimes, Hurahan, Fulton, Ayu and Lowe supporting Cullen. Remember, Ayu on the goal-scoring sheets in that game. Now, we've talked a lot about Connor Roberts in the playoffs. He had a great season at right wing-back. Kind of was the one player who was moved out when the system changed from a three to a back four. We've talked about him a lot, but he hasn't started either of the games. Would Steve Cooper be tempted to bring back Connor Roberts at right back. Would he split up a defence that really, other than a counter-attack involving a Matt Grimes slip and a really good finish by Corley Woodrow, would he split up the back four? Would that be a bit tough on Kyle Norton? Probably would be a bit tough on Kyle Norton. But is there a temptation there to try and get Roberts on the pitch? You would argue Roberts is higher up the totem pole than Liam Cullen. But I can see all the comments coming in already. Sometimes the best players don't constitute the best team. And you need round peg in round hole. And uh, maybe keeping Cullen in the game is that, really. There is the option, though, if he does want to go for, let's just get my best players on the pitch for this mega game, that Connor Roberts could sit in a position where he finished the second leg. And it was very much, look, play down the right when we're attacking, get forward, but cover the fullback. Just cover that right flank. You're not a midfielder. You're not a winger. You're not a wing back. Just be wherever you need to be as such. That would obviously mean uh, no Liam Cullen. It would mean Norton would play. Moving Ayu across into the middle. Ayu's a great player, but sometimes with dangerous players... Just get them away from the centre-backs. Get them wide. Get them into that half position. Maybe Ayu is a bit more dangerous there. And it does beg the question, if you're going to do that, let me move the same players a little squidge and you get this. The old shape that Swansea played pretty successfully for the most part during the season. But when um, things fell off, they switched to the back four. And that shape with Connor Roberts in the team was abandoned. Let's take Roberts out for a second, put Norton back in. There is one other option up top that Steve Cooper may use, 
not sure he will, is Morgan Whitaker. You see, we popped in in the number nine position. He did start towards the end of the season against Derby, his former club. He scored as well. I think the ball barely crossed the line, did it? But he scored nonetheless. However, that was a game where Cooper was resting players, uh, which I think tells us what we need to know. And in that playoff semi-final first leg at Barnsley, it was Cullen who was in. So, I think you'd probably all agree the likely 11 is the first leg 11 that played against Barnsley with Liam Cullen up top and Kyle Norton over Connor Roberts. I think logic dictates that may be what Steve Cooper does unless he's got a surprise up his sleeve. Woodman, Norton, Cabango, Gway, Bidwell, Grimes, Hurahan Fulton, Ayu Lowe and Liam Cullen starting in the playoff final. Let me know what you think in the comments. What's Steve Cooper going to do? Uh, there's Brentford. And we can, given that there's been no horrible injury to a Brentford player in the game. I say in the game, not before the game. We can talk about the Brentford second leg 11. But those who have their ear close to the ground will know what I'm referring to. That 11 I've got up there was not the 11 that was picked to start the game because Christian Norgard got injured in the warm-up, which meant Dalsgaard moved across. You can see him there at right centre-back and Ruslev came in. So, it was Raya, Pinnock, Jansen, Dalsgaard. Ruslev and Kanos were the wing-backs. Jan Elton Jensen, double pivot with Mark Condes, licence to get forward. And Waymo starts. He didn't start the first leg, Marcus Force did. And Ivan Tony is an, well... An obvious starter now with 31 league goals and a playoff goal to his name. Now, there are a couple of big returns that could mean Brentford's back five or back three and wing backs look a little bit like that. And we're talking about Rico Henry and Christian Norgard. Work with me for one second. Let's assume Dalsgaard is back. He started the second leg after coming on as a sub in the first leg. Let's assume he's back. So we're talking about Norgard as in the three centre-halves and him in the middle. And Rico Henry, who's a bit more harder to kind of grasp where he is fitness-wise, because he came back as a uh, substitute in the first leg, and then he was nowhere to be seen for the second leg. So is he less likely to return? Who knows? If he is, I think Brentford fans would like the look of that. Henry and Dalsgaard, full-backs, wing-backs, in for the first time in the longest time. And Norgard between Janssen and Pinnock. Obviously, the full guy there would be Mads Ruslev, who would drop to the bench as right wing back. I've kept everything else the same. That could be the size of it with the two big returns. What else could Thomas Frank come up with, though? He could go full force. Let's assume uh, Norgard and Henry are fit. There's Marcus Force, who came on and scored the winning goal. But... He started in the first leg and they lost Brentford. And he came off the bench in the second leg and they won. Hmm. Does um, Frank go with the first leg front two or the second leg front two? We're talking Mbwemo and Tony in the second leg. We're talking Force and Tony in the first leg. Who knows? One thing we do know is that our good friends over at Betfair will give you 9-2 to two for Marcus Force to repeat the trick. Last goal scorer, Marcus Force, 9-2. to two. You would have won on that one at the weekend. Can he replete, repeat excuse me, the trick, whether he's starting or whether he comes off the bench? Interesting. Now, let's just keep Force there for a second and look at those options Brentford could have in the midfield, particularly in the attacking midfield position. Let's assume two things. Let's assume Rico Henry's there, so uh, Sergio Canos is, um, is freed up. And let's assume Yanel and Jensen are the double pivot. Let's just go with that for the time being. Look, Godos, Canos, obviously if he's not occupied at left wing back. And Buemo, if he's not up front, could play off the front too. Fosu, who did in the first leg. Marcondes, who did in the second leg. There are a whole load of options if... Marcus Force plays up top and Sergi Canos isn't used at left wing back. Look at that. Embarrassment of riches in attacking midfield. Can they conjure a playoff winning team out of it? 
I've got to go with my hunch. And my hunch tells me, and I've got no information on this, it's nothing more than a hunch, that Norgard will return and that Rico Henry will be on the bench. I'm guessing. Um, so, if that's the case, I think Thomas Frank will keep Mark Condes in, who did assist the third goal, and he'll keep Brian and Buemo in, who's running did um, cause Chris Meppham's mistake and the red card. Remember, they're going a bit against, and we'll talk about this in a bit, Cabango and Gway. Need a bit of guile. They need a bit of pace, a bit of dribbling ability. The power of Daryl DK did not work against Cabango and Gway. So that is just my hunch, which is kind of um, a cross between the first leg and the second leg teams. Raya in goal. Janssen are returning Norgard and Pinnock. Canos maybe with Henry on the bench. Dalsgaard. Jensen, Janel, Marcondes. And Buemo over force. Still be super sub. And of course, Ivan, Tony. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's look at some key battles. Ethan Pinnock versus Andre Ayu. Let's think about this. Let's think about this very, very carefully. And I've written about this in the piece, so I'm pointing to the wrong side, on Football 365. Now, Ayu is a standout attacker for Swansea. He plays front right. Pinnock is the left centre-back for Brentford in an attacking team that will commit the left wing back forward, meaning the centre-half on either side sometimes has a pretty big gap beside them and in front of them. Obviously, Andre Ayu is going to want to be popping himself in that gap. Now, Ethan Pinnock has been playing in a back four for the most part of Brentford, but in this running has had to get attuned to that back three position. Pretty smartish. And he was run past a couple of times early in the second leg. And you'll remember that David Brooks pass that um, picked Adam Smith out inside Ethan Pinnock. He got caught out with that space in the fullback getting up and attacking. Well, there's the Conor roberts Carl Norton question again because um, who could exploit him better? Now, let's flip this from a Swansea point of view. How did Swansea score in the first leg? Transition, a wing back forward. Ayu into the space, punished them, curled it in. Ayu can deliver the goods. Can Pinnock keep out Andre Ayu in that left centre-back front right battle? Andre Ayu to be the first goal scorer like he was in the first leg against Barnsley. You get 9-2 to two over on Betfair for that one as well. Another key battle. Let's assume my hunch about the Brentford front two is correct. You would then get Brian and Buemo and Ivan Tony against Mark Gray and Ben Cabango. Gray and Cabango were super perb in the first leg it's a different challenge though uh, remember Barnsley they like to make defenders defend they play on transition they get DK forward quickly they press the hell out of you and head it kick it test of strength defending uh, Gway and Cabango were brilliant can Brentford offer a more tricky um, tricky a different mode of challenge to Cabango and Gway, i.e. the fox in the box that's Tony, who's got a bit of everything. Good in the air, can run in behind, can come short, and boy, can he finish. And Buemo is the X factor though, isn't he? Can he pull out wide? He can go either side, inverted or orthodox winger. Can he run in behind? Can he dribble as well? That's going to be the challenge. Gway and Cabango looked pretty on it in the semi-finals. And whoever the Brentford front two, even if it is championship 30-goal striker Ivan Tony, they have their work cut out to get past those two at the back. And speaking of at the back, what about this for a battle? David Raya and Freddie Woodman. They're not going to come up against each other on the pitch. They're going to be, if I can pull my hand into the screen. Oh, this is hard to do without looking. Let's go... I can't do it. I'm watching in mirror. Um, they're going to be opposite ends of the pitch anyway. You know what I'm saying. Now, Freddie Woodman was really, really good, especially in the first leg. Um, and 
I think is looked upon as a guy who could really make a difference in a game. David Rea can be a little bit more up and down. And remember the playoff final last year did get caught out on his um, near post by the Joe Bryan free kick. I wonder, I wonder if we get a repeat of that, of Woodman being imperious and Rea just getting caught out. Could the goalkeepers make a difference? Will it be Woodman that gets caught out and Raya being imperious? Who knows? The battle of the goalkeepers as well is an interesting one. Who would you rather have in goal? Let me know in the comments. There is the shutout. It looks like the bookies, our friends at Betfair, favour David Raya and his team for the clean sheet. Brentford are evens to keep a clean sheet. That's a 90-minute price. Swansea... 11 to 4 to keep a clean sheet. Woodman or Raya? Who's the most likely? Will there even be a clean sheet in this game? Get your views in the comments. The final battle really is the big one if it is a tight game. And Steve Cooper, I think, will want it to be a tight game. Then Steve Cooper v's Thomas Frank from the dugouts could make a big difference. I think the way the battle will play itself out is, and this is how Steve Cooper would like it, Steve Cooper asking the questions and Thomas Frank trying to answer them. I.e. Cooper setting up and saying, this is what we're going to do, get past us. If you can score, you'll win. But by the way, if you commit too many forward, we'll kill you. We'll kill you on the counter. Um, or we'll kill you on quick transition with Ayu and Hurahan feeding that ball through and Grimes. Um, and low in his pace leave those gaps come at us too strong we'll beat you is what Cooper's going to be saying and he'll want Thomas Frank to be going to his bench and tweaking and answering the questions will he use Marcus Force Godos all of those names Fosu um, that we were talking about in that attacking sense he would love to get a goal in front as well Cooper because then he can ask all the questions of Thomas Frank if Brentford get in front. Has Cooper got the answers? Thomas Frank had the answers in the second leg this year against um, against Bournemouth and last year against Steve Cooper and Swansea. Didn't have the answers in the final, did he? Against Fulham and Joe Bryan with two goals in that final. Who's going to be asking the questions? Who is going to have the answers in the key battle in the dugout? Beautifully set up with a manager... Cooper, who knows tournament football, knows knockout football with his um, England, was it under 17s or under 19s? I can't remember. Gway was playing with him. So was Latabodia. So was uh, Phil Foden, who's going to be playing later on Saturday in the Champions League final. Who's going to be asking? Who's going to be answering the questions in the tactical battle? Fascinating stuff. Right. Predictions, please, guys. And really, there's only one question, isn't there? I'm not interested in the score. Or how we arrive at it. Who is getting promoted? Who wins the tie? 90 minutes? Extra time? Penalties? However, who gets promoted? Who wins the £170 million tie? Brentford are the favourites. 4-11. to They finished higher in the league than Swansea um, in third place. The Swansea's fourth. Swansea, outsiders, 15-8. to It's a two-horse race. So let me know what you think in the comments. Who is getting to the Premier League? Now, I'm going to give my prediction right now in the form of my bet builder treble. And if you were following the watch-alongs, and we will have a watch-along, uh, you'll know that my bet builder trebles were very successful last weekend. And not that I can um, recommend that you back them. I can just throw them out there. If you had, you would have won both of them last weekend. Now, I have to remind you to uh, be gamble aware and please gamble responsibly if you are um, going to be uh, heading over to our friends at Betfair. Um, this is my Bet Builder treble and Betfair have boosted the odds for us. They've given you a little bonus. Um, if you click on the game, uh, Brentford versus Swansea, it's already up on the website over at Betfair. Click on all, scroll all the way down and you will get the boosted odds for my Bet Builder treble. What am I saying? Am I going to be right or am I going to be wrong? I am saying both teams to score over 1.5 goals. Obviously, one means the other, but there's a slight distinction. 
Brentford to be promoted. There you go. Seven to two will give you on that one. I've nailed my colours to the mast there. I think Brentford, second successive season in third, second playoff final. I think they might just have enough to get over the line here against Swansea. And my bet builder, Trevor, will pay you seven to two over on Betfair. Both teams to score over 1.5 goals and Brentford to be promoted. Seven to two. Go and get involved on that if you fancy it. There we go, guys. That is my playoff final preview. It's the last game of a great season here. Thank you, everybody who's been watching all season. Uh, we covered the championship right the way through. And now we get this huge occasion, which we will be marking with another watch along in association with Betfair and Football 365 over on the channel. You can check out my preview on Football 365. The written work, the written version of this is over there now with a couple of little bonuses. And uh, Football 365 will be across all your football needs for the playoff final and then the Champions League final um, later in the day on Saturday. So go and check out Football 365 and follow them on Twitter at F365. If you want to have a look at my Bet Builder treble, it's up there um, in the video now for posterity. And there's a few other little tips over on Football 365. So go and um, go and get involved. Thank you, everybody on the channel, again, for making our new partners here, uh, Football 365 and Betfair. So welcome as part of our journey growing this channel. Right. I've had my say. Now you have yours. What are the teams going to be? Who's going to win those tactical battles? Who's going to be asking the questions? Who's going to be answering the questions? And ultimately, there's only one question that matters. Who is going up to the Premier League? Is it Brentford or is it Swansea? We will find out on Saturday. Join me for the watch long. Make your predictions in the comments. I can't wait. I'm getting excited already. So I'll leave it there and say over and out. See you on Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button and to be notified every time we upload. Ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go watch another video.